Hello and welcome back to the Deborah Peters Show. It is a fabulous Tuesday and I'm very excited to have you join me. I have a whopper of a show for you today. As we're just rolling into the new year, I feel like there's a lot of energy that's been taking place within people's minds around the possibilities of what this year holds for all of us. I just had some calls today with some folks from Europe and London, and I can tell you that this is a global energy, that everyone is really feeling the excitement, the possibilities, the potential, the expansion of this year of 2019. And I hope that you're one of those people. And if you're not, by the end of this show, you're going to be asking yourself some really big questions about what you could be doing differently right now, what you could be thinking in a different way and how you could be shifting your entire reality and the growth of your business just by tweaking your mindset, your attitude, your points of view, your energy, your emotions, because this episode is called Bending Reality, Creating New Energy in Your Life and Your Business. Because the energy of creating is and unto itself its own dynamic. And this is something I think that most people either aren't aware of or they just completely overlook. It is so easy to get pulled into your day and to have your day be something that is running you and controlling you. And instead, we're going to look at ways of having you shift that so that you're actually the one in charge of your reality. Hi, Jason. Thanks for tuning in. What an exciting day this is. I'm so happy to have you join me. Now, I have changed the time of this show. We were running at 4.30 in the afternoon. I've turned this into a lunchtime show for all of you. I think this is a really good time of day to just have a little pick-me-up. You know, it's like you're halfway through the day. Who knows what you've dealt with all morning long? And, you know, the last thing we want you to do is to go sit through a lunch and not really appreciate your greatness. So I'm, I'm running these now on Tuesdays and Fridays at 1230 in the afternoon, right during your lunch. So you have time to get yourself a lunch bag, a cup of coffee, you know, something to eat, and you can tune in to The Deborah Peters Show while you're enjoying your lunch. So here we go. So I have um, a lot prepared for you today. I've been working on this particular segment for some time now because it's, it's really the beginning of a fabulous new energy with this year. And I wanted to give you some tools that you can use immediately that you can begin to change up your reality. You can change up the um, types of relationship dynamics that you have, the way your health is functioning, your level of happiness and joy and creativity. And you can also change up how your business is growing and your profitability by using these tools. So I have 10 basic uh, tools that I'm going to go through with you today. Now, the thing I want you to realize is this is, this is a broad brush stroke. Okay. I don't have the, the time here to go into each uh, point in, in depth. And I do teach courses for that. So the Shift, Change, and Heal Your Money Story course is coming up later on in January. You can join that. It's a nine-week program. We, I, I teach personally teach the course online live, and it's nine modules. And I walk you through a process of Shifting your energy and your mindset and your neurology into a space of receiving more. So, you know, I was going to call it Shift Change Heal Your Receiving Story, but it's not very sexy. So 
I called a shift change and heal your money story because everybody likes that. Everybody is, is after money in some fashion. Now I just realized that I didn't plug in my microphone. So give me a moment to do that. There we go. Perhaps that will give us some better sound. I just realized, oh my gosh, I didn't plug in my microphone. I actually got a phone call just before I started this, and so I was a little distracted. So next time I'm not answering the phone a few minutes before my show. All right, so um, let's start with your power. All right, so your power. Your power comes from within. I once had someone say to me, where do you get all your energy? And my response is and was, we don't get energy, we are energy. And so we don't get power, we are power. Our power comes from within. It is a relationship, a connection that you have with your inner being. That's your power. When you can ask of yourself something, anything, an experience you want to have, a, um, a certain lifestyle you want to create, types of relationships you would like to have. We can ask that of ourselves and then we create it. So power is something that comes from within and it's generated based on the relationship that you have with yourself. It's really important to, uh, to really fully tap into your power, it's really important for you to realize that you create everything. Now, sometimes we would rather not take that kind of responsibility. We'd rather not say, I create my own reality because there's probably some things in our lives that we don't like. So if we have to look at how we create our own reality, then we have to take responsibility and be accountable to the things that we're creating that we don't want to have going on in our lives. And so the only way you can change those things is to actually decide that you're going to own it. Because until you actually decide that you own it, it is what it is and it will always be in charge of you. So that first step is like, stepping over the threshold from being powerless to being powerful, filled with power, creating and generating your own power through your mind, through your energy, through your spirit, through your emotional process, because it's not an either or, it's a combination, it's an and, all right? and. And what this does is it gives us the ability to focus. When we can focus on an outcome, no matter what the circumstances are to the contrary, no, what, no matter what the appearances are to the contrary, when we focus on a particular outcome, then the outcome has to pass. It has to come to be. There's just no other way because we live in a universe that is malleable. And how is that universe malleable? It's malleable with our thoughts. Our thoughts and our attention and intention to that outcome actually create that outcome. It's pure alchemy. It's taking a thought and turning it into a live, tangible, measurable experience. If you can't focus, you can't create because the scatteredness of your focus will create scattered results, right? The point with this is what you're doing is you're tapping into the invisible and you're bringing the invisible into form through your thought process, through your energy, through your focus, through your, your asking of yourself to create something from within. And um, all right, so that's the premise, like that's the foundation. You need to get, in, get yourself into a place where you totally know 
that you are creating your own reality. And then become aware of yourself. So this is number two. To really achieve great accomplishments in life, it's a, a, a relationship that you have with yourself. And you know you've heard me talk about this a lot. I talk about it in every episode. And I'm going to continue to talk about it until you actually get into alignment with it. That it is your... Um, relationship with yourself, it's your knowledge of what makes you tick that enables you to create the experiences that you want to create. This is truly the key to success. It's truly the key to freedom. It is the absolute tool to generating and creating any experience you would like to generate and create in your life. Health, vitality, wealth, scaling your business, attracting the right kind of partnerships, collaborative efforts, joint ventures. It's really about knowing yourself because you can't possibly understand other people until you fully get yourself. And this is the, 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 the difference between being a victim and actually being in charge of your life. Because victims will always feel put upon. Why do they feel put upon? Because they're not in charge of themselves. And they feel like there's something outside of them that can affect them. Hi, Howard. So nice to see you. Thank you so much for tuning in. This is the new time slot, by the way. It's Tuesdays and Fridays at 12.30. It's the lunch hour the Deborah Peters Show, and today's episode, if you're just joining us, is Bending Reality, the energy of creating your life and your business. And so my show is all about the use of energy, thought, emotion, and creating from within and developing those tangible income or um, those tangible outcomes and incomes. So if you were to look at your life, and you were to look at your thoughts and you were to imagine that you could see the threads of energy that are generated by your thinking, you would know that they actually turn into tangible results. And this is how every mastermind works. This is how every team that flows together, creates together. This is how every organization grows and expands itself. It brings on people that are willing to contribute and align. Contribution and alignment. Those are the two main elements of attracting a team and developing a team in terms of peak performance. So when you become aware of yourself and you learn what pushes your buttons and you decide to become a master of your own emotions, then you get to learn how your emotions actually govern your life. And in the governing of your life, they can either um, hold you back or they can actually enable you to expand. If you're not in charge of your emotions and your mind, then you're actually reacting to your environment around you. Hi, Saeed. So nice to have you join us. I think you're on the other side of the planet. So it's probably about uh, one or two o'clock in the morning for you. So thank you for joining us. Um, hi, Sheldon. Nice to have you on here. I appreciate you taking the time. So um, when you're able to manage your emotions, then you are in charge of your reality and you're in charge of your destiny. So you're either creating reality or you're reacting to reality. Now, if you're reacting to reality, then someone else is creating through you, right? We all know the term that someone knows how to jerk your chain or push your buttons or, or you know, pull you up by your short hairs and, and you get triggered. So when that's going on, that person is, or that situation, maybe it's a situation or, or a circumstance, they're actually controlling you. 
and they're creating their desired outcomes through you. So imagine the boss that is the bully and you get triggered by being bullied. That boss is creating their reality through you. So they're basically using your energy to create the outcomes that they're looking for. And you know, it depends on, on the situation. You know, if it's a sales culture that is um, an away from driver, they're banking on you being a polarity responder. They're banking on you going into fear. They're banking on you getting triggered because when you're triggered, you're not in, in self mastery. When you are triggered, they're running you. So in order to not get triggered, you have to get to know yourself. You have to look in the mirror. You have to do the personal growth work and really come to terms with the truth about yourself. You know, these are my, this is my Achilles heel. This is where I'm weak. This is where I'm soft. This is where other people have been able to trigger me. And then you can stop blaming those other people. You know, the, the people that we think are assholes or the people that we think are, are, you know, impossible to deal with. We can stop blaming those people and we could actually go, wow, um, I created this because my buttons were easy to push. And this is a blind spot in me that I didn't even realize that I had. And it was through this situation that I was able to see my blind spot. And then you just work on yourself and you create that relationship with yourself. So that blind spot is no longer a blind spot. You know, there's, and again, I don't have time to go really deeply into each um, point, but there are layers of consciousness. There's basically four layers of consciousness. And I actually teach it in my business accelerator boot camp, which is coming up on February 22nd and 23rd in Los Angeles. Because as a business owner, you really would do well to understand and know the four stages of consciousness, because as you're building out a team, you're collaborating with other business leaders, you're having to do deals and put contracts together. You want to be able to look at that person's energy because you don't have to actually see them in person. I can tell someone's energy just from how they language their emails, you know, just looking at a business card, I can tell you what issues someone has or walking into an office building, you know, when I go to do consulting work and I walk into their foyer, I know exactly what's going on in that company because I can feel the energy. I've, I've attuned myself to be sensitive to it. And we can all do that. You know, not every world class pianist is born that way. They're born with a talent or a, or a desire and then they hone it and they develop it and they attune to that talent. And that's what your daily activities should be about is attuning to your own talent. But that's a whole other conversation. Maybe I'll do an episode on that next time. Um, so mastering your self talk is really critical to being able to master your emotional state. Because if you're browbeating yourself, if you're criticizing yourself, if you're lamenting the past, if you're looking at what doesn't work in your life and wishing you had a different life, but then not actually doing anything about it, that self-talk will break you down. And then you really don't need anybody outside of you to give you a hard time. You just break yourself down, right? What happens then is you attract people and situations and circumstances into your reality to reflect how badly you treat yourself, right? Because then it becomes like that mirror thing that's going on. Um, yeah, so I want to say this about reaction uh, and then I'll leave that topic alone and we'll move on to the next one. So reacting uh, to others, others are creating through you. And um, in order for us to manifest what we expect, or sorry, in order for us to manifest what we desire, rather than what we expect, that it's important to take a look at the programming that you're running. 
because typically we get what we expect. You know, if you saw Wonder Woman in the final scene, she says, in life we don't get what we deserve, we get what we believe. And this is the point I'm making. So in life we don't get what we desire, we get what we expect. So, you know, you could desire this like beautiful life, but if you expect to fail, or if you expect to suffer, or if you expect to, I don't know, whatever your word is, then that will be the experience that you have. Okay, so um, how do you get past that? Well, you have to start raising your vibration. And one really amazing way to raise your vibration is <laughs> to never gossip. You know, I catch myself because it's tempting, right? It's tempting. So no gossip, no um, talking about other people, and no repropagating a problem. So if there's some kind of problem going on in your community, in your industry, in your business, in your uh, wow politics, everybody's doing the whole. Everybody's on the politics bandwagon. Um, you know, just like extract yourself from it, it'll sort itself out, or it won't, you know, whatever the case is. And what you have to ask yourself is, if I get involved in this, is it really creating a better life for me? And yeah, we could be altruistic, and we could say, yes, but if nobody does anything, then nothing changes. It's like, well, I'll tell you, it all starts at home. So if you really want to do something for yourself, you know, do it in here. Start internally because the rest of it isn't going to make any difference if you don't have yourself in alignment anyway. All right. So to raise your vibration is about meditating. Meditate, meditate, meditate every single day without missing a beat. And if you're really struggling and you're really suffering, then you definitely want to meditate more than once a day. Right now, I'm meditating twice a day. And uh, midday, I'm doing an additional energy pull. So I meditate in the morning. I do an energy pull right after I meditate. Then I do an energy pull at lunch. And then I meditate before I go to sleep. So that I'm constantly feeding the positive and raising my vibration. Because around me in this world is so much negativity. You know, you can see it on social media, you can hear people talking about it in the streets. And in order to not have that be in your realm, it's about raising your vibration and then it won't find you. It will not find you. You'll only hear positive things. You'll only have experiences basically that are in alignment with your vibration. So if you're having really challenging um, experiences right now, then you know you need to raise your vibration because you're attracting that to you by the very nature of what you're being vibrationally, right? All right. Um, so with the meditation, it, it, um, it creates more freedom because it creates more space. What ends up happening is we... The more that we think a certain kind of thinking or thought patterns, then the more that um, builds up a neurology in us that um, actually starts to propagate on its own and create algorithms uh, that are like zeros and ones. And you know, it's, I don't want to get into the neuroscience part of this too much. You can come and take one of my courses and I'll teach it to you. But essentially, you know, our unconscious mind is made up of a series of zeros and ones. And depending on the order of the algorithm is how we replicate behavior, right? So in the replication of that behavior, it becomes an unconscious process that we're not even aware of most of the time, we're just doing it because we're not paying attention. We're not in present time enough. 
which is comes back to the four stages of consciousness, you know? Stage one is unconscious incompetence, where you just don't know you don't know. It's like ignorance is bliss, baby. You know, you just don't know what you don't know. And then eventually that becomes really painful because dissonance is always the number one driver behind creating change. Rare is the person that creates change because things feel good. You know, when things feel good, people get lazy and they start to get into their comfort zone. But when dissonance is happening, when shit's getting hard, that's when people are like, whoa, maybe I need to change things up here. You know, a few years ago I did, um, I was retained by Boeing to do a program for them because they had uh, let a lot of people go. Um, and there were people that were in, in their jobs for 15, 18 years. And um, they had been there for so long that they just, uh, they were stuck. I see someone trying to join. So let me see if I can um, help her get on here. Um, so what ended up happening is um, we were really just looking at their patterns, like where they were in terms of their comfort zone, because they had come to believe it's all they knew, it's all they would ever know. They built their families and their social circles around working together. All their kids went to school together. You know, they were really in this massive like comfort zone. And the thing that shook their tree to the very core was the change up corporately. And as much as it was painful, and yes, I, I, I had to, um, to redirect the, the training I had mapped out for them because they needed an opportunity to have a voice and they needed an opportunity to grieve. You know, there's stages of emotion that we go through whenever there's a breakdown in some sort of a relationship. And this was the biggest relationship of their lives pretty much because it was their money, it was their livelihood, it was their social circle, it was their extended family. So we processed that and then once we got past that and they could create more space in their thought process, then we were able to inject in some possibility thinking and what else is possible and how does it get better than this? And what else could you create? How much are you willing to receive? Because when you're in this comfort zone, you really don't have enough space to receive more. It's why people stay the same and refuse to grow. And anything that is not representative of that sameness, they reject because there isn't enough space in their mind for that new possibility to insert itself. And when you run that pattern long enough, you die. The cellular structure of your body, the molecules actually start to lose energy and you die. It's like entropy, right? Years and years and years ago, Deepak Chopra came out with this book called Ageless Body, Timeless Mind. It's a dry read, I will, I will warn you. But if you can get through it, it's brilliant. And I remember reading that, you know, I used to be a, I still am, but I mean, it was to the extreme. I was a, a Deepak groupie. I, I was living in Vancouver at the time and I was flying in and out of California and sitting in the front row and I was listening to all his, his audio programs when I was driving around town and you know I was just like it changed me it gave me the tools to just really start to understand the the um, um, the malleable capabilities of time space and matter and that's what today's episode is about it's about bending reality. And the only way you can actually start to step into this awareness of bending reality is to meditate. 
if you don't step out of the fray, you know, there's a saying, and I, I believe it's on the, it's at the Oracle of Delphi, and, and it's, it's, you know, be in the world, but not of it. And what that means is you can be in the world and serve and provide and, you know, interact, but don't be of it. Meaning don't become it. Don't, don't be a sheep. Don't be sucked into the status quo and the norm, which is a point I have here I wanted to share with you about being yourself. Be yourself at the risk of being alone because it's much better to be alone and be yourself than it is to be what someone else wants you to be and be in a relationship and then be lonely because you're not being yourself, right? I did 10 years of couples coaching, so that's a whole other conversation. <laughs> um, trusting yourself, yeah, that's number four. It's about trusting yourself. Above all else, doesn't matter what anybody says, really doesn't, it's just words anyway. And the words only have the meaning that we give them. So it's about trusting yourself above all else. And how do you do that? Well, you, you cultivate that relationship with yourself through meditating, where you really unequivocally know that um, what it is that you are knowing is really the truth, not what someone else is trying to convince you of. Whether that's a client. You know, look, coaching people has been my greatest personal growth program of my entire life. Because I listen to all sorts of excuses from people, from my clients, when I'm enrolling people into programs and I'm hearing their excuses, sometimes they don't even know they're saying it. They're just so ingrained into this limiting belief system. And it's not just one belief, it's a system of beliefs. That they just say it, it on autopilot, right? And if I was to buy into every excuse I heard from a client, I'd become an enabler. You know, I'd be like, yeah, I totally understand, honey, it's okay. And it's like, no, I'm calling you up, okay? I'm, I don't call them out because it's not combative, but I am calling them up. Like you can do so much better and you can think so much greater and I hear it every day, all day long, when I'm talking to people, they all defend their limitations because they don't trust themselves. Instead, they're sucked into this algorithm of fear and doubt and lack <laughs> and limitation, and they have all sorts of reasons why they cannot be, do, and have what they want to be, do, and have. So, Trusting yourself, cultivating awareness, um, and then taking score of your successes. When you go to sleep at night, make a list of all the amazing things that you've accomplished today. And do that every night, every single night. And then when you wake up in the morning, do it again. Yesterday was a brilliant day. I did this, 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 and this. Even if it's something like, I didn't let myself get triggered emotionally. Like, holy cow, this person came at me and I didn't let it get to me. Like, that's an enormous accomplishment. Pat yourself on the back, celebrate that baby, and just let yourself bask in the knowledge and the awareness that you are the master of your own reality and your mental and emotional process. And that creates more space for you to be able to take in more, receive more, allow more, always asking for more. Um, yeah, because we have this prime directive of our unconscious mind 
that um, dictates that we are constantly seeking more and more and more. And if you don't let yourself seek more and more, then you actually kill yourself. And I know I'm sounding a little extreme here, but it's true. I see so many people that are walking dead. And, you know, how many parents have said to their kids, you should be satisfied with what you have. No, you should appreciate what you have and ask for more and create more. Create, 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 create. It is the fuel to staying happy, to staying vibrant, to staying young, to staying healthy, and to staying wealthy. If you're not creating, you're dying. That's nature. Go, go, if you don't believe me, go for a walk in Mother Nature. Every tree is continuously growing. Even in the wintertime, when they appear to be dormant, there's lots going on inside those trunks and branches and root systems. So nature is constantly creating. And when nature stops creating, nature dies. And you are the biggest component of nature. So that's a really important element. Um, retain your childlike imagination and enthusiasm for living. Be a kid. You know, I'm not saying that you should be irresponsible. I don't really think kids are irresponsible anyway. I think that's a bad rap that adults give them. I think kids are brilliant and they're self-regulating and they can make really good decisions for themselves. It's just when the adults come in and tell them, you're a kid, you don't know what you're talking about, that that creates a really big disconnect for the kid between who they know themselves to be and who the parent is saying they aren't. And that's, you know, that's another conversation for another episode of coming up with all these ideas. Um, let's see. Ah, don't rot on the vine. Ouch. Right? Don't rot on the vine. This is my motto. Um, I live my life as being a life of no regrets. So I decided a long time ago, when I was like in my teens, I said to myself, you know, I am never gonna, because I grew up in a family where everybody was regretting so much. And I said to myself, I am never going to regret um, not turning over that stone or not making that call or not, going to that country or, you know, living in that culture or just, I am not going to regret anything. And it's how I live my life. It's a life of no regrets. So I ask myself on a constant, on a constant daily basis, like, will I regret it if I don't do this? Will I regret it if I don't step this up? And then I listen to my body because your body will always share with you and tell you what, look, the truth will always make you feel lighter and a lie will always make you feel heavier. So you just learn, you know, calibrate that and check within and ask yourself that question every time, you know, is this, is this um, expanding me or is this holding me back? Will I regret this? So another way of doing that is saying to yourself, if I do this now, what will my life look like in five years or three years? If I don't do this now, what will my life look like in five years or three years? And just take a minute and just play it out in your mind. You know, what will your life look like or not look like as the case may be? At least you're being introspective enough that you're self-discovering and you're not running around town calling up your buddies, asking them what they think. Because they don't know. They can't figure out their own shit. How are they going to know what to tell you what to do? And besides, I can guarantee you, whoever you're calling up is only going to advise you based on how they view their lives. So if they're in safe mode, 
You know, do you ever have to start your computer in safe mode? It's kind of like that. If they're in safe mode, they're not going to tell you to go take a risk. <laughs> they don't want you taking any bigger risks than they are. Because guess what? You might leave them behind. Is that a conscious decision? No. That's an unconscious. It's called the crab theory. That's an unconscious. Some people do it on purpose. You know, they're consciously aware of it, which is like stage two of consciousness, right? Where you are, um, where you know you don't know. You just know you don't know. You don't know what you don't know, but you know you don't know. And I like I like clients that are in that state because they're thirsty and hungry for knowledge because they know they don't know and they're coachable. They're coachable and they're teachable. Okay, so don't rot on the vine um, and don't become like other people, please. You know, don't be a sheep, basically. Stop following people around and doing what other people do. It's don't be predictable, essentially. Stop, stop being so predictable. You get up every day and you do. You know, there's only, a, and if you watch my last show, I think it was my last show. Yeah, if you, if you watch my last show, and they're on my YouTube channel, go subscribe. I put all the recordings up there. I talked about this, about there's only a handful of things that you really should have consistent in your life, right? And um, I won't go through them all, but they're, they're pretty basic. It's like your nutrition, your sleep, your thought process, you know, staying positive, right? Being in command of your thinking and your emotions, your fitness, your sleeping, your food, uh, your thoughts, your water consumption, like just the real sort of basic, primal kinds of things and the rest of it keep changing it up keep changing it up so it doesn't look the same go live somewhere else for a while go um you know do something completely different as a as a form of business like shift it change it you know change something especially if you're negative right um stay unique stay unique stay unique that is um, outside of the box, outside of the box. Don't dress like everyone else. Don't hang out at the same places all the time. You know, you just become ingrained in the limitation of that. Because if this is the box, if this is the box of what you think you know, and it's delivering a certain level of experience to you, then everything else is outside of the box. So at some point you just need to expand your horizons and increase the size of the box so you can let in more and constantly be letting in more because that increases the space between the thoughts in your algorithms, right? Um, three more points. So have grit. You gotta be persistent. You know, one call, one effort. It's not going to always pan out exactly in that moment. When you learn how you tick, you actually learn how other people tick and you realize that there's a certain amount of repetition that absolutely has to take place in order for there to be change. So, you know, essentially it's the, so they, there's a saying that it takes 21 days to change a habit. And that's not true. It's erroneous. However, it's the truth that it's based in is this. It takes somewhere between three, seven, and 21 repetitions to generate a new habit. So three times, seven times, 21 times. And we don't know if it's three times, seven times, 21, 12, eight, like we don't know how many repetitions until we give it a go. 
And the reason we don't know is because everybody's in a different place. So it might depend on the day, it might depend on that person's depth of programming, how tightly they're holding on to a belief or a limited um, uh, thought pattern or a negative emotion. You know, it might be just the day that you connect with that person and they're triggered by fear from something from the past. And you show up with this grand idea and they reject it because they're blocked basically. And these are energy blocks that actually get stuck in our physical body. So for instance, um, I, I don't have time to go into that, but uh, I really want to. So maybe that's another show. When you, have, when you have health challenges, you can look at the certain part of your body and you can pretty much identify what the thought pattern is. And what you can do if you want to know more about that is um, there's a book called Heal Your Body by Louise Hay. And, you know, essentially Louise Hay uh, was, she passed the last few years. I've been, I followed Louise. She, her material saved my life. When I was in my twenties, I started following Louise Hay and I read her book, You Can Heal Your Life. And then I studied, You Can Heal Your Body. And you can start to see the connection between the types of thoughts we think, the emotions that then come from those thoughts and then the physical ailments that we manifest. So if you want to know more about that, now you've got my resource. You can get Louise Hayes' book and you can start working with it. All right, um, pull energy rather than push. So a good example of this is, have you ever walked into a store where you just thought you were gonna do a little bit of um, window shopping per se? You just wanted to see what they had. And suddenly you're just like salesperson after salesperson just coming at you and they're pushing to buy, buy, buy. And you just feel like, whoa, like totally overrun. That's pushing energy. So when you're going out into the world and you're creating clients and you're doing deals, you don't want to be pushing energy at people. All right. You want to take time each day to pull energy. And then you can pull energy from all of the places, events, people, thoughts, um, space, time, matter across the planet to contribute to you, to contribute to what you're creating. And we all love to contribute. You know, even if we say we don't, we all like to contribute because we're energetically designed that way. And when you take time daily to do an energy pull, you're actually drawing it to you like a magnet, like an alchemist, where you're deciding what you want your outcomes to be, and then you're pulling that energy towards you. All right, uh, last but not least, read The Art of War, okay? Because at the end of the day, everything that you create is about being able to observe the situation and not just observe the situation for what it is, but observe the situation for all of the probabilities that it could be. And the reason for that then is you can align your energy with the probabilities that you would like as the outcome, and you can, you can pull that energy to you and create those outcomes for yourself. Um, then you wanna, you wanna orient yourself to, okay, is there something that needs to be done here? Is there something that needs to be said? Um, is there something that needs to be delivered to this situation or person or, you know, getting oriented with the energy of it so that you can actually shift it and then take action, execute. You know, there's only so much thinking that can be done and then you just got to pick up the phone, you go to the meeting or go shake somebody's hand and just, um, execute, get engaged. So that's it, my friends. Um, being willing to change, that's really the key here. So I hope this episode has helped you and you've got some tools that you can take into your day, into your week, into your year, into your life, and you can start to create 
the experiences you want to have and the health and the wealth and the life that you want to live because this ain't no dress rehearsal, baby. This is it. This is this body is what's going on right now. And what a pity it would be for you to be ready to kick the bucket and looking back on your life and saying, wow, I could have been so much more and I didn't let myself. So yes, I laid a heavy on you. It's a good reality check. I want you to just ponder that for a minute, not too long, but long enough to get some leverage on yourself, to get out there, to get out there and create, create you. Create the you that you were designed to be. The limitless, the greatness, the joy, the enthusiasm for living, the happiness, the expansiveness. And leverage everything, leverage everything. Get to know everyone, connect with them, how can they contribute to you? How can you con contribute to this planet? What are you contributing to the planet? And what's the planet trying to contribute to you that you're not letting in? So I appreciate you being here. And just a quick reminder to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Follow me on Instagram. It's NEI for change and uh, my Twitter is the same handle, NEI for change, it's the number four. Um, the Shift Change Heal Your Money Story online course starts later this month. I've got a few seats left available, it's a very small class. I hand select everyone that attends to make sure it's a good fit. And the February 22nd, 23rd boot camp it's the Business Accelerator Bootcamp coming up in Los Angeles. And then I am off to London to speak at NASDAQ. So very much looking forward to that. Thank you for joining me today. That's our lunch hour wrap up. Don't want to keep you too much longer. Love you. Take care. Have a blessed day. And I will see you on Friday, same time, 1230. Invite all your friends. And thank you for sharing this and liking and commenting. I appreciate it. Take care. Have a blessed day. Bye.